Dear viewers, welcome to our online lesson in our channel at Steve Gitau 3660. I am on, I'm your online teacher, Mr. Steve Gitau. In our lesson today, in Form 3 Chemistry, we shall look at how to determine the empirical formula and molecular formula of a given compound. By empirical approach, we mean determining the formula of a compound from data corrected from experiments. That's the meaning of empirical approach. We are doing this having borne in mind the fact that you did a topic in Form 2, how to write chemical equation, how to write chemical formula of a compound using the variances, be it variance of the metal or non-metal, or variance of a radical. So there are two approaches that are used to determine the chemical formula of a compound. One, you can use the variances, that is the theoretical approach, or you can use the experimental approach whereby data drawn from an experiment, that is um, empirically, can be used to determine the, the formula of a compound. Straight away, let us move to question number one. We shall learn this through a set of questions, and at one point I will give a question whereby you will solve on your own to make the lesson quite interactive. Question number one reads that an organic compound, this is a compound with, made up of two elements, carbon and hydrogen, contains 92.3% carbon and 7.7% .7 hydrogen. The relative molecular mass of the organic compound is 78, that is the RMM, the mass of one molecule of that compound is 78. Calculate the molecular formula or determine the molecular formula of the compound. Given that, the atomic number of carbon is 12 and the atomic number of, the, the, the atomic number of hydrogen is 1. So straight away, let us look at what we do. In this uh, case, the first thing is we equate the percentage composition to composition by mass. So we are going to uh, uh, see that uh, this, the percentage composition is equated to composition composition by mass. That is, we can use the percentage composition in place of the mass. Straight away, the first item is you draw the table showing the element carbon and hydrogen. And number one, we, we put the masses, the mass under each of them. Under carbon, we are saying we are going to equate that percentage to be the equivalent of mass, that is 92.3, while as for hydrogen, it is 7.7. .7. Now, item number two, we register the relative atomic mass of each of the two elements. For carbon, it is 12, and for hydrogen, it is a 1. Item number three, we calculate the number of moles. The number of moles in each of these uh, elements. How do we get the number of moles? We get the mass given, that is 92.3, we divide by the Atomic, the, the relative atomic mass, and here it is 12. So in this case, the mass given is 7.7. .7. The atomic mass of hydrogen gives is 1. Now, viewers, from your calculator, 
divide 92.3 by 12 and put down what you get. I want to believe that to two decimal places, you've gotten 7.69, and in this one, we, it remains as 7.7. .7. At this point, we talk about now simplifying this number by dividing by the smallest. Dividing, we dividing by the smallest. We dividing by the smallest, and this enables us to get these moles in terms of whole number ratios. So which, this is a step that will lead us to that. We have to make a decision. 7.69 and 7.7, .7, you find that 7.69 is the smallest. 7.69. And here, 7.7 .7 divided by 7.69. This gives us a 1, and this gives us um, 1.00 and almost negligible. So we let it to be 1. At this point, then we are able to capture the mole ratio, the mole ratio to be uh, 1 is to 1. At this point, viewers, I would like us to learn something here. If we get a decimal here, which is exactly 0.5, take, for example, here we got 1, and for instance, here we get 1.5. How do we treat this to a whole number ratio? More ratio in whole numbers, in whole numbers, a whole number ratio. That 1.5 or 2.5, 3.5, we multiply it by 2. So 1.5 becomes 3, 2.5 becomes 5, and so on. So a situation whereby we get exactly 1.5, then we multiply by 2. What about if the decimal is less than 5? Take, for example, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1 and so on we drop that decimal point less than 5. The 1.2 becomes 1. The 1.3 becomes 1. The 2.3 becomes 2. The 7.1 becomes 7. Case number 3. What if the decimal point, the, 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 the decimal value is greater than 5? Take, for example, you got 1.79. We round that off to 2. If we got 2.85, we round off that to 3. 2.9, we round that to 3. 4.79, any number greater than 5, than zero, the, the decimal which is greater than 0 0.5, uh, round off to the nearest whole number. So those are the three scenarios. Now back to the question. We are finding that in terms of ratios, there are, or there is one mole of carbon for every one mole of hydrogen in the, in the compound. That gives us what we call the empirical formula. At this point, our calculation is done. So I can complete on the table. I can close the table at that point so that I may look at um, the calculations that are there. You find that the empirical formula, empirical, the empirical formula uh, is, the empirical formula will be equal to one carbon to one hydrogen. One carbon to one hydrogen. That means we can get the empirical formula mass or the mass drawn from the empirical formula. Empirical formula mass will be equal to the mass of these two. One carbon is 12 atomic mass units, one hydrogen is one atomic mass unit, and that gives us 13. What does that one mean? We have the formula which says 
if you want to know the number of repeated units in the empirical formula as represented in the molecular formula, then the relationship is that molecular formula, molecular formula is some n times the empirical formula. Empirical formula. So this is very important that the molecular formula is n times the empirical formula. Put it in terms of what you are working. It means the molecular formula mass is n times the empirical formula mass. Very important. So, if we move on to this other section, and re re referring to the table, you find 78 is the molecular formula mass. So, 78 is equal to n times the empirical formula mass, which we found it to be 13. We found it that to be 13. And what does that mean? Dividing both sides by 13, dividing both sides by 13, we get n is equal to uh, 6. We get that n is equal to 6. What is the meaning of that? What does that uh, mean? It therefore means that the molecular formula, you may write in red, it means that uh, the molecular formula, molecular formula is, the molecular formula is therefore equal to 6 uh, times the empirical formula, which we write as CH, and we say this is repeated six times, and that comes to be C, that, uh, when we say C, we are referring to carbon. Six carbons and six hydrogen. Six carbons and six hydrogen. The, more, the molecule of our compound has six carbons and six hydrogen. So viewers, this is a case of direct computation, whereby you are given the percentage composition which you, co you equate to the composition by mass. Should you also be given the mass, then you put them directly. And this approach enables us to find the molecular formula of some unknown compound with the data drawn from experiment. Data drawn from experiment is what we are calling empirical data. And that is how we go about. In summary, we, we are saying, have the mass of the individual elements, put down the RIM, find, that, find the number of moles by dividing mass given by the RIM, uh, divide by the smallest so that we can have one part of it in whole number ratio to a certain fraction. Compute everything to be in terms of whole number ratios, the two moles, and we have talked about that, and then relate the molecular mass as n times to the empirical formula mass. And once we are able to do that, then you can say that number n is the repeating factor in the empirical formula. Viewers, we shall move to question number two, which is going to be slightly different, whereby we shall look at how do we find the number of moles of water of crystallization in a particular uh, hydrated salt. So join me in question number two. Viewers, let's look at question number two. In question number two, we have a compound contains 12.8 grams of copper, 6.4 grams of sulfur, 12.8 grams of oxygen, and 18 grams of water of crystallization. The question is, find the simplest formula of the compound. So in this particular question, we are looking at a situation whereby we have elements and a compound called water. And the, the four items, we are supposed to use the empirical data 
that is they are data from experiment to get to find out the chemical formula of the entire uh, uh, compound that we have so here is a different trick from question number one whereby for the elements we shall find their moles by use of RAM we, defi uh, we divide mass given by RAM but for the compound called water we shall divide the mass given by the compound's relative formula mass RFM let's go um, as usual we first of all need to list down the components so I'm not calling them elements because water is not an element but components we have sulfur we have carbon uh, we have copper sorry sulfur oxygen and water what are the respective masses the mass of each for copper as in the experiment it is 12.8 grams sulfur is 6.4 grams oxygen is 12.8 grams and water is 18.0 grams at this point we find or we put down the respective ram and for water r f m that means for copper we have been given 64 for sulfur it is 32 for oxygen it is 16 that is the atomic mass number of hydrogen number of protons plus number of neutrons and for water we calculate the rfm of water to be two hydrogens each one plus 16 one oxygen that is 18 so we put here the rfm of water is 18. at this point we need to determine the number of moles the number of moles in each case so we have the calculation 12.8 divided by 64 and that gives us so as we write i'd like you to do the computation to, uh, from the calculator 12.8 divided by 64 gives us a 0 0.2 next we have 6.4 the mass divided by 32 and punch that on your calculator and that also gives us a 0 0.2 next we have the mass 12.8 divided by 16 and that from the calculator we get 0 0.8 and finally the 18 grams divided by 18 uh, which is the relative formula mass the mass of the molecule of water and that gives us 1.0 uh, um, now the step that precedes this one requires that we divide by the smallest so that we may be able to get the first in terms of a whole number ratio which we shall now use to guide the others so the step we note here is divide by the smallest divide by the smallest and in in this case out of 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.8 and 1 0 0.2 is the smallest divided by 0 0.2 gives us a 1 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2 gives us a 1 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.2 gets us a 4 and 1.0 divided by 0 0.2 gets us a 5. So this point uh, we are able we are able to develop the the formula for the entire compound as for copper we have one for sulfur we have one for oxygen we have four and we normally say dot the water of crystallization we have one molecule 
Normally, we do not show the ones. And that means our compound is copper sulfate, which is hydrated with one molecule. So viewers, the big trick that we had in this question was being able to have RAM for the elements and RFM for the material which is in compound form. Viewers, join me in question number three, whereby we shall look at, and this is the most common, very interesting, the most common part whereby we have the products in small quantities being used to determine the empirical formula where we have carbon four oxide and water in their small quantities being used to determine the molecular formula of a certain hydrocarbon. That is coming up in question number three. Join me in a short while. Viewers, welcome back to question number three. In question number three, we are having when a hydrocarbon was completely burnt in air, 2.508 grams of carbon four oxide and 1.2825 grams of water were formed. So a certain hydrocarbon, when, uh, when burnt, produced these grams of CO2 and these grams of water. The question is, find the empirical formula of the hydrocarbon. Find the empirical formula of the hydrocarbon and given that the relative molecular mass of the hydrocarbon is 58, what is its molecular formula? So in this case, we are having a challenge of uh, knowing the elements in terms of their masses. So what we're going to do is a very simple trick. We are going to calculate the RFM of CO2 so that we can know, so that we can determine the mass of carbon in this, in this uh, CO2 that was practically produced during the experiment. So first and foremost, we look, look at number one, the RFM. We use RFM for all compounds, but for compounds that are molecular, we are free to talk about RMM. CO2 is molecular, we can use RMM or RFM. The relative formula mass of CO2 is we had seen earlier, carbon is store of oxygen, two of them, each 16, uh, and that gives us 32 plus 12, and that is 44 atomic mass units. Now, what is the mass of carbon in, the, in this amount? What it means is that in 44 grams of CO2, there are 12 grams of carbon. What about in these grams of CO2? How much carbon is there? Whichever way you look at it, we are saying 44 grams of CO2 contains 12 grams of carbon. What about 2.508 grams of CO2? It contains how much carbon? Cross multiplying, we get 12 times 2.5 Zero 08 divided by 44 and that comes to be uh, from your calculator I would like you to punch on that and I want to believe that you have gotten 0 0.64 uh, sorry I beg your pardon 0 0.6840 grams in a similar way we work out how much hydrogen was in this water? So we do RFM of water to be two hydrogens, each one atomic mass unit, 
plus 16 and we get that is 18. What is the meaning of that? It means that 18 grams of water contain 2 grams of hydrogen. What about the value from the experiment? We had 1.2825 grams of water. It contains how much hydrogen? That is 2, we cross multiply, 2 multiplied by 1.2825 divided by 18. And that, from our calculations, we get 0 0.1425, 0 0.1425 grams. So these are the masses of the elements that we shall now engage in finding the, uh, the, the, the molecular mass, the, the molecular formula. We post as in our area table, whereby we have the mass of each element. The mass of carbon, we bring it down, 0 0.6840. The mass of hydrogen, 0 0.14. Since they are elements, we are going to use the relative atomic masses of carbon is 12 and that of hydrogen is 1. Then we, we get the number of moles. We get how many moles are there in each case. That means uh, this is number of moles, number of moles, we get 0.6840 divided by torof, what do you get there? 0 0.1425 divided by one, what do you get at that point? Now in the first case, we are getting 0 0.057, 0 0.057, that is 0 0.057, and in this other one, we get 0 0.1425. The other step is we divide by the smallest to obtain the, the smallest in a whole number ratio. So we have uh, divide, divide by the smallest and that gives us, in this case, the smallest is 0 0.057. 0 0.057, we divide by 0 0.057, the same. 0 0.1425 divided by 0 0.057. In this case, we get a whole one. And in the other case, we get a 2.5. Viewers, as we had mentioned earlier, when we obtain the number of moles at 2.5, to get the mole ratio in whole number form, we multiply this by 2. So the last step here requires us to do moles in whole number, in whole number ratios, in whole number ratio. We multiply the out by two, and this comes to be a two, while well, this comes to be a five. And that means, if we can make a conclusion at that level, the empirical formula, maybe you can use this space, that the empirical formula is carbon 2 and hydrogen 5. Carbon 2 and hydrogen 5. Now, with that in mind, then we can move straight away into getting the number of repeated units. We had met a formula that says empirical, uh, that, sorry, beg your pardon, molecular formula mass is equal to n times the empirical formula mass. Looking at this, we can look at the empirical formula mass to be two carbons, I multiplied by 12, five hydrogens multiplied by one, and that gives us two times 12 is 24, 24 plus 5 uh, gives us 29. From the question, the, the, the molecular, the relative molecular mass is 58. That means molecular formula mass 
is 58 repeated n times in the formula, particle formula mass 29. And then you find that dividing by 29 both sides, 29 both sides, the n is equal to, the n value in this level is equal to 2. What does that mean? It means that the molecular formula is given us C2H5 or hydrogen 5, carbons are 2 and hydrogens are 5 repeated twice. And that gives us the carbons that are 4 and the hydrogen is a 10 or they are 10. So from the empirical formula, we see the pattern is repeated twice and we are able to get the molecular formula as 4 carbons, 10 hydrogens. From our knowledge of organic chemistry, we shall be able to identify what this compound is. Otherwise, viewers, in summary, if you can summarize this question very quickly, we are saying when, when you are given the masses of the products, we need to understand or calculate the individual masses of each, the individual masses of each of the components that make that compound, determine their number of moles, and then finally compute the, the molecular formula from the empirical formula. This is one of the most uh, interesting questions in uh, empirical work. With that viewers, I would like us to stop our lesson there, and I would like you to comment in the, sec in the comment section, post questions that you find challenging in this area, share the video, subscribe on it so that we may grow this channel. And you can also, uh, in the comments, put in a topic that you'd like us to cover next time. With that, we come to the end of our lesson. Thank you. Share, uh, subscribe, comment, and see you next time in our upcoming video.